I think the main challenges uh, are that um, managers and leaders have uh, have a history of working in a certain way with an organizational structure that has always been in place. Structure that has always been in place. Je m'appelle Alexandre Zermati et je vous propose toutes les semaines une conversation avec une personnalité inspirante du monde du travail. Cette semaine, je reçois Jürgen Appello, auteur et conférencier, qui va partager avec nous sa vision de l'agilité. Cet épisode est en anglais, je vais mettre sa traduction dans les notes. Je laisse tout de suite la parole à mon invité. I am an author and speaker and entrepreneur, and I have been involved in managing uh, organizations, uh, small to medium-sized, uh, for uh, many years. And uh, about that, I wrote a book called Measure 3 about uh, eight and nine years ago, uh, about the role of the leader in an agile organization. And that sort of launched me as a public speaker and became entrepreneur with my own small companies, where I still try to practice the most uh, modern leadership and management uh, techniques. And since then, I wrote uh, a couple of uh, different books about uh, leadership and, uh, and recently about I think the main challenges uh, are that um, managers and leaders have uh, have a history of working in a certain way with an organizational structure that has always been in place and that they find it very difficult to uh, to get rid of that existing structure to replace it with something new and that seems to be required when we look at uh, agile transformations and uh, the more modern ways of working um, managers have to play different roles and that is difficult for them to figure out what what exactly that role is and um, I hear all the time that this is one of the biggest challenges uh, to convince managers and executives and the the, the senior leaders in uh, in an enterprise that they should uh, lead the company in a different way think that management is a very important job, uh, but it needs to be shared with everyone, uh, with a lot of self-management and peer management. And traditionally, most of the management work was done by the managers who have the management job, the, the, the title of, of manager. But in a complex organization where things change all the time, uh, with an environment that is always changing, we have to work more with self-organizing teams that are also to some extent self-managing. So that means that the management work still needs to be done, uh, but you can delegate a lot of that to self-organizing teams. That means that you don't need the same number of managers anymore, but the amount of management is um, is, is still needed, and maybe that um, maybe that gets a bit more even. Uh, when you had, had delegate to self-organizing self-organizing team to, to give you a very concrete example um, I have uh, um, uh, I work with very small startup teams that basically determine uh, to a large extent their own compensation now tr traditionally that is something that a manager decides how much everyone gets paid but the only thing that concerns me as a management a manager is the total budget I don't really care how much each individual person gets paid as long as long as they are happy about how much they are paid and as long as their peers on the team also agree with how much they are getting paid. So I prefer to delegate that to the self-organizing team and let them figure it out. And yes, that takes a bit more time. It takes a bit more discussion with the team and therefore more time is spent on management work, on compensation. 
um, because I delegated to a self-organizing team. But the result is that people are happier because they were involved in the decision themselves instead of me just telling everyone what they are going to earn. People are happier because they were involved in the decision themselves. I don't want to uh, compare them and say this is better than the others uh, because they all have their benefits and drawbacks and everything depends on context. So uh, I, uh, uh, I, um, I think all these frameworks are for me just toolboxes. They are collections of good practices that work for some organizations. And then some people that I admire quite a lot, uh, they collected those uh, practices and put them together in what they call a framework. And that's where I start disagreeing because I think the frameworks are a bit static. Um, even though they get version numbers uh, in some cases. But overall, the concept of a framework is rather static. I prefer to see them as just collections of good practices that should be evolving all the time. And uh, the different frameworks are just different toolboxes with different uh, practices that they collected for probably different kinds of organizations and, and different situations. Are a bit static. I find it interesting that everyone basically asks the same question uh, which big organization is the great example? Um, but there are no such organizations. Um, many companies do things and everyone has their, their successes and their problems. I'm not going to give any specific name because as soon as I mention one specific company as a good example, there will be 100 people telling me that, well, actually, uh, not everything is good at that organization because there are also things not going well at that organization organization and then they will be right so no matter which company you choose they will be doing some things well and some things badly and I don't know any organization in the world that does everything in a fantastic way to give you one specific example uh, Amazon everyone knows that company is often admired for their relentless pace of, of product development and and uh, innovation and market expansion um, and Steve um, um, uh, Jeff Bezos is is often uh, quoted uh, for some of his agile practices such as uh, uh, self-organizing teams of uh, two pizza size and having a chair at the uh, uh, at the management table that always represents the customer an empty chair that represents the customer with a relentless customer focus and uh, he said uh, that everything um, the, the purpose of Amazon is to run as many experiments as possible in, in parallel. All of that sounds super agile. But at the same time, there are many reports of, of employees uh, within, in dire circumstances working in, in the Amazon um, distribution centers. It is not so great to work at Amazon in many places. So... Why would I offer Amazon as a great example of being agile? Because some things they do well and some things they don't well. And the same applies to every other organization out there. And um, yeah, so, but I find it interesting because you're not the only one. Everyone, but everyone asks me the same <laughs> same question. Give us examples of organizations. And I said, well, uh, no, there aren't any. And I don't know any organization in the world that does everything in a fantastic way. Yeah, that's an interesting topic um, that is um, quite popular nowadays because more and more organizations are discovering some benefits of remote working. Of course, there are also drawbacks uh, to remote working, but we are definitely moving in that direction that people can work from anywhere at any time uh, in a distributed and dispersed uh, teams. So uh, some things that I do with my uh, uh, team members is um, we have uh, plenty of online meetings on uh, Zoom. We call, well, that's our pay a favorite uh, um, a collaboration tool and uh, ongoing conversations on Slack. 
and uh, every now and then I fly people in to uh, to have face-to-face -face conversations because it is important that you hang out with uh, with your uh, peer uh, team members every now and then and just uh, have lunch and dinner and and have some fun uh, to get to know each other at a personal level um, and those are the most important things to do that that you have frequent contact with each other remotely with video you need to see everyone um, and um, and uh, every now and then have a physical uh, co-located uh, meetings but you don't need to be fully co-located all the time anymore nowadays i believe uh, within uh, in agile organizations that was the case 20 years ago when they came up with the agile manifesto because there were no tools uh, good enough for remote collaboration but we are now uh, 20 years uh, uh, further and uh, the online collaboration tools are getting better and better so i enjoy working with my teams uh, whether i am uh, in a hotel room or at an airport or 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 wherever i am uh, they're always um, I'm at the, at the touch of a button at my fingertips um, feeling very close to me basically that you have frequent contact with each other remotely with video agility requires teams to be self-organizing and make a lot of decisions um, themselves because uh, they have usually the best information at hand to make those decisions and uh, and that requires a different skill set uh, for sure uh, where people communicate more with each other that they are better at decision making uh, processes in in uh, in groups because uh, in traditional organizations they just waited for their boss to give them instructions and hand the results over to their managers uh, so um, I believe that one important skill is um, uh, is to have um, um, uh, um, social uh, um, empathy and, and and social engagement with team members. Uh, the social dimension becomes much more important. It's it's the first line of the Agile Manifesto: is individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Well, that means that people need to be good at working with individuals and interactions. That's the the interrelations in the team. Um, so yeah, that's for sure something that agility requires of the skill set of, uh, uh, of people. Uh, they have usually the best information at hand to make those decisions. The first step, I don't think there is a first step um, because uh, everything depends on context. Uh, you cannot say, um, uh, if, if somebody wants to climb a mountain, uh, where do they start? Well, somewhere at the bottom, <laughs> but on which side, I don't know. That depends on the mountain, that depends on the people, that depends on how fast do they want to go up, uh, how much skill they have. Uh, because some paths up the mountain are easy, but they take long, and other paths up the mountain uh, are faster, but they take more experience. So everything depends on context. Everything depends on context. I, I cannot give one best place to start. I think a good start for managers is to read a book. <laughs> Just read some books. <laughs> well, I have a good one. <laughs> I have a ton of resources, so yeah, just go to the reference section on, on in my book. I have many, many resources uh, that I refer to from my books. I'm also on goodreads.com with plenty of uh, reviews of books that I have read. Uh, so uh, I, I do not know one place to start, to be honest. I don't, I don't think that exists. What I learned is that it is all about reducing the feedback cycle. That is what I learned since I started writing books. Um, and when I was a manager, everything depends on getting feedback as fast as possible. Don't make things too big. Reduce the, 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 the time it takes you to get feedback on an idea, on an experiment, on an hypothesis. Uh, and that, re that applies not only 
to software development, uh, not only to startups with their lean experiments, uh, but also to um, uh, to managers uh, the way they work with with people, uh, and that translates itself to um, uh, performance appraisals on an annual basis. They don't make sense anymore nowadays. You need continuous uh, before performance evaluation, basically, of people on the team and involving everyone on the team instead of just doing it yourself. All of these things uh, you have to reevaluate as a manager and try to shorten the feedback cycle. Je remercie Jorgen d'avoir accepté mon invitation et je vous donne rendez-vous la semaine prochaine avec un nouveau numéro d'Azap.